Are you interested in learning about the new threading strategy inside MuleSoft's Runtime version 4? It is especially important when deploying your applications to Cloud Hub. In this video, I'm going to walk through an example where if we don't manage our limited threads correctly, we produce an unstable, unpredictable, and error-filled application. Then with our new knowledge of the Mule 4 execution engine, we will fix our application to be able to run efficiently and effectively on the limited resourced Cloud Hub server environment. Hello everyone, my name is Jason Estevan. I'm an independent MuleSoft consultant who looks for exciting and challenging projects. Today we're working in IndiePoint Studio version 7.4.2 and we're using the Mule Runtime 4.2.2. This is a follow-up to my previous video about threads in Mule 3 and all of you have been asking about the Mule 4 version, so here you go. I've created a basic Mule flow here that picks up files, transforms it, and then writes them back out. We're going to run this flow on our local machine inside AnyPoint Studio to see how it handles threads there, and then we're going to upload it to Cloud Hub and show you how the thread pools changes up on there and how we're going to have to change our application in order to handle them. This video is not to get too intense until the exact details of how thread management works, but I'm going to dive a little bit into it. So in Mule 4, there's essentially basically three main thread pools. And depending on what type of messenger processor that is running inside your flow, a different thread type will be used to perform that operation. So the three main ones are CPU light. It handles processors that's not really heavy. So things such as logging, the handoffs between some message processors, database select operations. The second one is CPU intensive. These are for really intense operations. Data weave is always executed by this type of thread. And the last one is IO. And that is tasks in this pool should be spent most of the time waiting or blocking. And the example they give here is called the database servers. So things that you have to call and then wait for something to come back. It's not exactly like an HTTP listener because an HTTP listener is sometimes you could send your request out and then do something else while you're waiting for that to come. But stuff that's blocking IO is like when you make a call to the file system, the data is constantly being read in so you can't actually leave. Also how you configure your message processors can use a blocking IO. For example, if you're doing a transaction, you can use a, a blocking IO thread across all processors within that transaction. A good diagram they have on this blog is that it shows you different messenger processors. So you have a flow that listens to an HTTP request, has a database, logs, runs a data weave, another logger, and then sends out for an HTTP request. And it just shows you from the pool here, from different pool types, You'll see here that the CPU light intensive and blocking, as I mentioned before, these other two are just basically for some uh, listener pools, HTTP listener pools. I don't want to get too much into them. But you'll see here, like the database select, the color code says it's a blocking IO call. The logger does CPU light. And then data weave is always done by CPU intensive. So you'll see here that one thread will do a message processor and then it'll go back in the thread pool and then different ones taken for the next processor. Of course, they, some of them do two or some of them will handle the handoff. So there is some optimization in there. Also, if one pool is empty, some messenger processors can pull from multiple pools. And you'll see this in your log sometimes when you're printing out messages. So this is to execute the log message processor. You have half of them that are written by the CPU light thread and the other half of them is by CPU intensive. So here's an example of some optimization. These rules aren't set in stone, but that's basically what it does. So my example here, you'll notice a lot of data weave transformations, and that's on purpose. I specifically want to hone in on the CPU intensive thread pools so we can learn how it works. So let me describe what this flow does. So we have an SFTP server, which is actually connecting to a FileZilla server, which I have running on my machine. It'll pick up files off of, um, well, it's actually on my machine, but it's picked up through the FTP server. So I have three different folders. I have a source, archive, and processed. 
So the mule flow picks up files off of the source folder. The files are just actually a lot of garbage. So it's just 990 characters wide of just pure garbage text. So I load this in as a CSV, sorry, as a flat file. So what I do is I load it in as a flat file and then I read it one file, one line at a time so I don't have to load it all in memory. I convert it to an iterator and then I loop through each line and then uh, basically I just wanted to do any, uh, any function that'll look at every specific character, just trying to stall time in here. So this one I create, I convert every line into uppercase and then added a second one in here. This one just another underscore and a function with the for each that'll look at every line and every character. And then I'm just adding the finalized product to a variable and then I write it out to the processed folder. I take it out of the array that comes out of my variable and I put it back together to a text plane and then write it back out to the processed folder, which again is one of these three here. And then I'll archive it, which I've specified in the SFTP connectors that I'll move it to the archive folder. So let's set up our first run. We're going to take 11 files, put in the source to be picked up. And we're going to run this application. I fast forward the video so we wouldn't have to wait. So what happened is MuleSoft picked up all 11 files within a tenth of a millisecond. And then it processed them all simultaneously and they completed about 33 plus 7, 40 seconds from each other. And you'll see this is my final log statement. And then if I go into my processed folder, they've all shown up in here. So you, when you analyze the first log message, it'll give, you'll see here that they has these numbers here. And that is actual the thread number in the CPU light thread pool. And you'll see down here on the I.O. log message, you'll see these numbers get up to about eight. So you could be asking yourself, well, how many threads do I have? Do I even have to worry about it? It seems like I have a lot. And there is a formula to determine how many threads you do have. So MuleSoft does have listed how many threads you get for each pool. And you'll see here the formula for CPU light is two times the number of cores. CPU intensive, two times cores. Blocking I.O. is dependent on the cores as well as the memory. But don't take the document word for answer. You can actually go into your runtime and see where it's configured. In AnyPoint Studio, in the server runtime 4.2.2, um, under Mule and then Conf, there's a file called Schedule Pools. And if you open that up, you'll see the formulas in action here. So for CPU intensive, thread pool size, two times the number of cores. So how many cores do I have on my machine? That's a good question. I tried to look it up. This machine is an i7. Um, this technically is a quad core, but I'm not too sure exactly how the JVM determines how many cores that I have. However, when we get the Cloud Hub, because it's a virtual machine, it's very defined. So Run Locally Any Point Studio has full access to my server resources. However, this becomes different when we move our application to an on-premise MuleSoft runtime because yes, we'll have full access to the server, the dedicated server's resources. However, the number of cores we use will determine how much we have to pay MuleSoft for licensing. On Cloud Hub, because they manage the server, it's pretty defined on what we get. So depending on whether we use a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or 1, V core server on Cloud Hub, we always only get a maximum of four CPU light threads and four CPU intensive threads. So that's quite a big difference than what we had locally when we were be able to process 10 files at once. So let's take this application and 
put it up on Cloud Hub and see what happens. We're inside Runtime Manager on Cloud Hub and we've deployed our archive to a 0.1 vCore on version 4.2.2. So according to MuleSoft, our CPU intensive pool is going to have four threads. So how many files theoretically can we process at the same time? Because our flow is very data weave intensive, inside the loop for every line we're running three data weaves, and we know these run on the thread pool CPU intensive only. So if we get four of them, we can kind of we can kind of say, let's let one thread run at each file. So we're going to drop four files and see how that works. Two, three, four. Let's drop it into the source and check out our logs. Fast for the video and let's see what happened. So detected new file happened four times and then we finished four of the files. Let's rearrange the file names in order and then do some quick math on the timing. So I've tracked all the finishing times to the starting times for the same files. And it turns out each file took 69 and change seconds to process. And this will come in handy later, so please stick with me. Now let's see what happens if we run five simultaneous files, knowing that the CPU intensive thread pool is only has four threads in it. Fast forward the video, let's get these timings. Some rearranging and timing calculations. So each of the five files that we ran simultaneously took around 74 to 75 seconds to complete. But when we ran four in a row, the files processed five to six seconds quicker. What this is showing us is that because there was four threads in the CPU intensive pool, but five files were being processed simultaneously, there wasn't a single dedicated CPU intensive thread for each file. So the four of them had to be passed around between the five files. So this was not optimized and that's why it took longer. And lastly, let's do a test with six files to see what happens. You'll notice in the logs we have a bunch of warning messages now. And there's a good MuleSoft article that kind of explains what this message means. So let me try to break it down. The thread pool CPU intensive was rejected from the scheduler. And then has the details here of the thread pool. So the CPU intensive thread pool is of size 4, which we know that. There's four active threads, meaning that all the threads are used up. 8,565 tasks have been completed by this by this uh, pool scheduler. Um, that makes sense. There were a lot of lines in the file. And there's now keeping track of queue tasks. Essentially what happened is the data weave message processor came up to be executed and there was no more threads left. MuleSoft smartly detected this and put the task into a queue and you'll see here that these are suppressed for five seconds, but they're showing up every five seconds. So there's a lot more that not being executed and thrown in the, in the queue. But it, I do see the finished file message. So if I go to process files, yeah, all six of them are there. So let's see what happens to the server. So you'll see here the CPU definitely spiked using 22% of the CPU for, for just processing six files is not a good ratio. And if this was at a larger scale, we could easily have run out of CPU. Also, let's check the timings. We're gonna get rid of the warnings. Let's do the rearranging calculations one last time. So once again, our per file processing time has slowed down considerably. 
up to 101 from 75. So another 25 seconds per file. So our application running on CloudHub has become very unstable. Depending on how many files are picked up at once, the throughput changes considerably. Not to mention that we saw the CPU usage spike on the server resources dashboard. So how can we make our application more stable and predictable? So this FTP server is greedy. It'll literally pick up any file that's waiting in that source folder. And the number of files landing in that folder might not be in our control. If it's being written to from another application, maybe that application's busier overnight when it's doing a back job. Or maybe it's busier during work hours when activity's happening through a source system. Either way, we need to find a way to throttle those files so that we don't run out of threads. And we can do that with a setting on the flow called max concurrency. So what this will say is how many max files can we process at one time? So from our tests, the fastest per file concurrency we had was when we used four files at once. So let's set a four here and see how that affects our application. We're going to repackage and deploy to CloudHub. The server is fully started now. Let's dump all 11 files. The first thing you'll notice is that our detected new file log message only showed up four times. When we ran it locally with all 11 files, they were all picked up at once. And now you'll see that as a file finished, a new one is picked up. And then a file is finished and the new one is picked up. And we haven't seen any warning messages. So the max concurrent setting is working and now we're only at any given time processing only four files at a time, which we deem most effective for running our application on CloudHub. Now that we know how the thread pooling works and the number of threads we have on there. Hopefully this was a good introduction to the new thread pull strategy in Mule 4. We were able to show how MuleSoft calculates the sizes of the thread pools on our local machine where we have full access to all the resources, and then on CloudHub where we're much more limited. Then we were able to see in action what happens when we try to use too many threads, as well as MuleSoft's neat feature where they'll queue up waiting tasks. And lastly, it was the most important, we were able to adapt our application to our server environment. So we created a throttled and stabled application. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have a question or comment, please leave it down below. And if you're interested in more videos on MuleSoft technology, please hit the subscribe button. Take care and we'll see you next time. Peace.